What's up guys, XP Sauce, aka Confused Insurgent here. Welcome to a bit of a tutorial video, a bit of a change from the normal pace. Uh, what I'm gonna do here today is I have an EVGA GeForce GTX 950. Um, my, my file server, which also doubles as my uh, rendering station, um, currently runs a GTX 750 Ti, and I use NV Inc, uh, which is a uh, CUDA-based uh, third-party plug-in for Adobe Media Encoder that drastically speeds up rendering times, especially for 4K videos, because it offloads almost all the processing onto the GPU. So, the uh, the, the 750Ti um, has been in there, been working pretty well. I can export a roughly a 30-minute um, 4K video, a 30-minute video to 4K in about an hour and 15, an hour and a half. Uh, the 950 is a fair step up from the 750Ti. So I'm gonna, uh, and, and I have this one spare. I gave a buddy of mine a, uh, a 1070. I just replaced my 1070 with a 1080. So I gave him the 1070 and he gave me, this is my old 950 he was using. So he gave me this back. So I'm gonna throw this in the server. Before I, before I do that, I wanna remove the uh, stock thermal compound on it. EVGA does a pretty good job. They're, uh, they're one of the better video card manufacturers. Uh, their heat sinks are very good uh, stock heat sinks. And they do usually do a pretty decent job with the thermal compound, but I wanna replace this um, with different thermal compounds. So, first things first, you're gonna flip the card over and you're gonna find the four screws here, 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 and here. And <clears throat> you're just gonna remove them. What you wanna do first though, is you wanna loosen them. That way there's not too much pressure pulling, pushing on the actual die of the GPU from any one direction. Once they're loosened, initially, you want to go ahead and loosen them in a cross pattern completely and place them in your magnetic, part, magnetic parts tray, which I hope you have one of those. If you don't, they're about $5 on Amazon and well worth the purchase. So this is a fairly simple board. This isn't uh, like the 1080, which I put the hybrid cooler on, the all-in-one liquid cooler on last night. The 1080 is a little more complicated to get in and out of, but this is a fairly simple design here. So that should be all we need. Now it's, it's gonna take a little bit of wiggling, well, less than I suspected and it's off. So now as you can see here, there's the GPU die and there's the copper uh, plug. Let me uh, see if I can, let me just unplug this, it'll be easier so you can see it. So if you look right here, there's a copper plug which is sitting in the middle of an aluminum heatsink. So the GPU die is um, pressed up against this copper plug using this, uh, this thermal grease and uh, what the grease does is air is a very bad conductor of heat. Uh, so you wanna try to, obviously little small imperfections in the GPU die and the, the copper plate mean that they're never gonna make an exactly flush connection with each other. They're gonna be little pockets of air all in there. Those pockets of air are gonna cause thermal t conductivity to drop way down. So what you wanna do is you wanna put something that's fairly uh, thermally conductive in between the two so that it can fill all the little cracks and crevices and allow heat to transfer from the GPU die up to the heat sink. So uh, copper is more thermally conductive than aluminum, but it's also considerably more expensive. Uh, so what manufacturers often do is they put a copper plug in the middle and then the copper plug is connected to uh, aluminum which the, so the aluminum is responsible for, for getting the heat away and the copper plug is responsible for getting the heat from the GPU. So the heat goes from the die, the GPU die, which is down here. It goes from the die, which is this little metal piece in the middle that's covered with the thermal paste, into the copper plug. The plug uh, then radiates the heat to the aluminum. The fans then take the heat off of the aluminum and out into the case or in behind your case or if in blower styles, however the, the uh, fan mechanism works. In this case, it's just into the case. So what we need to do now is remove the old thermal material from the uh, from the die and the copper plug. And that's why I have a paper towel right here. So the first thing you wanna do, just get a clean paper towel and, uh, and, and you're not gonna hurt anything. So don't worry, don't worry. You don't have to be too careful. Uh, take a clean, clean paper towel and really uh, get in here and wipe it off. Make some firm strokes to get the crud off first. So as you can see, that's actually coming away pretty good. This is pretty high quality material. Um, it, the harder it is to, to get it off, the generally the lower quality the material was in the beginning, because that means it's hardened and uh, stiffened over time. And then you want to take the, uh, the actual copper plug and do the same thing. 
So that's a little just farm strokes. That's what she said. Farm strokes get the job done. So now that you've done that, you want to take some alcohol. In this case, I'm taking a 91% isopropyl. Anything 70% and up is perfectly fine. So we're going to take the alcohol and you're going to just kind of run it like that. Just get it nice and clean. Go in every direction because you never know which way that, that none of these things are going to be machined absolutely perfectly. There's always going to be little cracks and crevices and you never know exactly which way they're running. So just kind of go in every direction. Make sure that it looks nice and shiny like that right there. That's pretty good. Next, you're going to do the same thing to the dye itself. So if you can see here, firm strokes again, you don't want to, you don't want to get the paper towel down and see these little transistors that are on the chip down there. Those will tear off little pieces of paper towel. So try to avoid those. It's not a huge deal because once the alcohol dries, you can just blow them off. But uh, you want to avoid them. You can actually see the paper towel is already getting frayed because of those. So take a close look there. Pretty hot, right? Nice and shiny. That's what we're looking for. Now, since this is a copper plug, as you can see, that uh, that orangish metal in the middle is the copper. Since this is a copper plug, we will be able to use the uh, metal conductive material, which is in this uh, handy dandy syringe. And it is a real deal syringe. So be very careful with these because you can inject liquid metal into yourself. And contrary to uh, popular media, that will not make you into the T-1000. As far as I know, I haven't done it. But I'm fairly certain that you would not become a T-1000 if you injected 10 cc's of liquid metal into your finger accidentally. Uh, all you would do is um, it would hurt and you would have possibly have an infection. Uh, I'm not sure if this is, um, you know, biodegradable or uh, uh, or bio inert, but certainly I wouldn't recommend it. But for the purposes of putting it on GPUs, it is excellent. Now, you might have been wondering what the Q-tips were for. Well, this stuff is not like thermal grease at all. Thermal grease, which is this Arctic MX4 compound here, uh, is non-thermally conductive grease material that is uh, non-electrically conductive, excuse me, uh, the grease material that is good at conducting heat from, from metal to metal surfaces. Uh, what this is, is a metal-based, so this is, I think it's made from gallium, so it's a metal-based, thermally conductive, and electrically conductive material. Now, the electrically conductive part is the problem. When you put it on a GPU or a CPU die directly, if you get it anywhere off the die itself, you have the possibility that you could create shorts and burn the entire chip. So you have to be very careful with it. You want to use it extremely conservatively. I mean, just the barest of dots. Uh, a, they say a dollop will do it. A dollop will do you right here, big time. So without stabbing myself, we're going to take this and we're going to put the, the barest of dots. Let me get it a little centered up here. I'm going to put the barest of dots here. And you, it is a syringe. You can suck it back up if you get too much, which happens sometimes. There. That dot is actually probably a little much. I'm gonna try it and see how it works. If you can see that, that's the kind of dot you need. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Q-tip and you're gonna just spread it around until it forms a mirror-like surface. And you'll see it's not gonna it's not gonna want to spread to start with. But if you keep working at it, this stuff will spread like it's like it was made for it, which technically it was. It's a, it's a lot like water in that it grabs on to molecules of itself. I don't remember the, it's the opposite of hydrophobic. It's, I don't remember the term for it exactly, but uh, anyway, it behaves much like water in that way. So there's a, this, this actually looks pretty good. There's a nice mirror finish going on. If you can see that, that is actually pretty good. Now, what you want to do is take the leftover on the Q-tip, see it there? Take the, dot, uh, the copper plug, 
and just kind of spread it around on here. Get the excess, spread it around. You don't have to put any extra on there. There's plenty left on the Q-tip. Make sure to, to go in different directions. Get it in those get it in those crevices. That's the important part. Make sure that it's getting all in the little crevices in the metal, so that it's going to make contact when you plug when you screw this thing back in. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug the fan back in. So if you can see here, this little fan connector right here, plug it back in. Pop goes the weasel. Then uh, it's just a matter of placing the two back together, like so. Take your screwdriver, grab these screws out of your, your magnetic parts tray. Don't tighten all the way. You just wanna uh, make the first two across from each other in an X like that. Don't tighten all the way, just to make sure it grips. You wanna feel the, the threads bite and uh, and then you're you're good, and you want to do that for all four screws. Just make the threads bite into the the uh, threads in the bottom. Once you're done, the last screw, go ahead and tighten all the way, and then go back in an X across. Yep, come back over here, tighten, come back, tighten, and that is it. This 950 is now ready to go with its uh, metallic based thermally and electrically conductive material. That's all she wrote, and this uh, this process pretty much applies to uh, to any uh, any GPU, any CPU you'd like to do this with. Do keep in mind, as I said, it is electrically conductive and cannot be used on aluminum heat sinks. It will eat through aluminum. Copper and nickel plated aluminum is fine, but if it is a straight aluminum heat sink, do not use this stuff on it. It will eat through the heat sink eventually. Now, you, I mean, you, you may get six months, you may get a year, but eventually it's going to eat through the heat sink. It's going to drastically reduce the efficiency. You're going to see rising temperatures. And then you're not going to, you're not going to be able to take it off and just replace the thermal material because it's already eaten through causing too many holes. And uh, you're going to have to replace the heat sink and possibly the dye. It can sometimes eat through the dye uh, if the, uh, the aluminum leaves behind certain byproducts. So, Keep that in mind. Uh, be safe when you're doing it. But like I said, you're not—you're you're generally not going to break anything. You don't have to be too careful. Uh, these things are pretty, pretty dang sturdy. They know what they're doing these days. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.